You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And hello and welcome into the Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Grant McCauley, Jake Mastriani with you on a Wednesday afternoon for some matinee action. And the Braves, they just kept on you know, doing what they do and following the June script, picking up another win. This one three to nothing behind Colby Allard and some great work from the Atlanta bullpen, some timely hits. It all came together and the Braves swept away the first place Minnesota Twins of the AL Central. And we got a lot to get into on this episode and, of course, get you set up for a showdown between the top teams in the NL East that is coming your way this weekend. Before we do all that, let's make sure that you are subscribed to Locked On Sports Atlanta here on YouTube. Go ahead, click that bell to get notified every time we drop a new episode. And if you like sweeps and Braves wins and great months of June, go ahead, hit that like button. Give us some comments, feedback, all that good stuff. We love seeing it. And subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Jake, once again, the Braves found a winning script. This one, though, had one of, I believe, a, a bit of a surprise tone when it came to the starting pitcher. Colby Allard, his third appearance overall, In the 2023 season, his first start for the Braves since July 31st, 2018. This one, though, went a lot better than that first one out. This I did not expect, and this is the most pleasant of pleasant surprises. Yeah, but should we be surprised at this point? I mean, this front office, they just know what they're doing. They're pulling the right triggers. I mean, again, a shutout on this day, a game that Colby Allard started. I mean... It's just incredible what this Braves team is doing, scoring the first run again. I know we'll talk about, but it's just like that was my first reaction after this game. I was just like it was a casual, you know, three nothing win for the Braves taking care of business. Yeah, taking care of business is the best way I think that you can put it for the Braves in the month of June as they improve to 20 and four inside this month. They have one game remaining. It happens on Friday against Miami with a chance to match the most wins ever in a single month, which has been done a handful of times, including last June. But this one, again, I I don't know that it's altogether shocking that the Braves found a way to win considering the way they've been hitting the ball. But this was not a high scoring affair. And the surprise to me became, you know, what Colby Allard was able to do. It it made him ultra effective. I know the Twins are struggling a bit, but this was a kid that went out there and gave the Braves more than they could have possibly asked for. We'll get to his line and all the things that have to do with his start and, of course, the work of the bullpen after him. But let's jump inside the line score of game number 80 of the year. We're almost at the mathematical halfway point as well. Twins in getting swept, dropped to 40 and 42, shut out on just four hits, no errors, four men left on base. Braves, though, 53 and 27, now 26 games over 500, three runs, six hits, no errors, five men left. Kirby Yates picked up the win in relief, inning in a third of, sh- of scoreless ball for him. He's 3 and 0. Kenta Maeda takes the loss. He wasn't hit hard, but he drops to 1 and 5 on the year. Right side of Glacius, 13th save of the season, two hours, 24 minutes of time a game, 38,260 paid to see it. On a very hot Saturday afternoon, or excuse me, a Wednesday afternoon, it probably <laughs> felt like a Saturday afternoon for a lot of folks if they had the spare time. Of course, it is summer vacation, but be that as it may, a very full house on a hot day at Truist Park. And they got to see what Colby Allard was doing. Four and two-thirds, Jake, three hits, no runs, one walk, eight strikeouts. Let me hit you with that line again, or at least the last part. Eight strikeouts, quite an exclamation point. It was. And look, we said yesterday, best case scenario, he gets through four innings. Well, he breezed past that and worked into the fifth in this game and just incredible. Obviously, you got to be very efficient to do that. You knew he probably wasn't going to throw too many pitches. Snicker pulled him out at 71, didn't let him go through that lineup a third time, but 14 swings and misses and 15 called strikes in those 71 pitches. I mean, just highly efficient. I really loved the curveball. I thought the curveball Mm -hmm. looked really good. He got some really good swings and misses on that, keeping it just below the zone. But I think because of that, our first obvious statement of the day, when you have the off-speed pitches working like he did, it really sets up that fastball, which was effective as well. Six whiffs on 14 swings against his fastball, which is not a high-velocity fastball, average 91 miles per hour. But again, you got people thinking about that curveball and you know they couldn't catch up to the fastball at the top of the zone so just very effective uh job by colby allard good job for travis darno who i'm sure doesn't have you know a long track record catching colby allard but good job by him calling this game and helping him be effective i thought for the most part you know he was around the zone every now and then he he would spike one or or lose one but uh for the most part i thought he was very efficient uh, had good command stayed in the zone and yeah just a huge outing for him Yeah, definitely. And just the one walk, of course, that kind of lets you know that even if he was wavering at a a pitch or two or falling behind an account, he found a way to get back into it. So like you said, credit to Travis Darno for a nice job of calling this game. Of course, the Braves do a lot of prep to have a game plan 
And that was a big reason why Colby Allard got this assignment. I know a lot of folks were asking about Michael Soroka. Why is he not making this start? He's been pitching well in Gwinnett. Why wouldn't they just throw him on Wednesday against a Twins team that's on the ropes? Well, one of the reasons why was that lefties give the Twins more trouble than do righties. And Colby Allard gave the Twins everything they could deal with and more, really, over his four and two-thirds innings. And the other thing, Jake, I do want to touch on with Colby was this being just his third outing of the season. Surprising, really, to see him get into the fifth inning. I know everyone would have loved to have seen, you know, maybe one more out so that he gets rewarded with that pitcher win that, you know, it's not completely meaningless. I know it means something to the pitcher himself, but I thought Brian Snitker made the right call going to a reliever who could miss bats the way that Kirby Yates has, not letting Colby go wandering through the lineup a third time, and particularly with the tying runs out on base. Maybe if it was two outs bases clear, it's a different story, but you don't want to put the team's win in jeopardy when you're out there hunting a personal statistic like the pitcher win is ultimately. I was managing along with that in my mind when the inning started, and I thought, I imagine when he gets back to the top of the lineup, he's not going to let him face them again. So I thought it was the, the right call. The situation in the game also dictates that a close game at that point. It's 2 nothing. If it was like yesterday where, as we mentioned, Elder was kind of struggling earlier, but the mm-hmm. offense gave you a bunch of runs early on, so you could allow him to kind of work through that. In this case, it's not that Allard was really struggling, but it was a close game. He hadn't really been stretched out. We mentioned it, only two starts before this in Gwinnett. So I thought it was absolutely the right decision there. And Colby Allard, you know, gave the Braves everything they could have asked for. Again, to just kind of go back to that well once more, one more time. And the Braves bullpen, I felt like, and you may have touched on this in the last couple of days, you know, it's kind of gassed up and ready to go because they haven't had to run through them time and again to get the first couple of wins against the Twins the way that they had to run through that bullpen all weekend long against the Cincinnati Reds. You got some really good stuff from Kirby Yates, an inning and a third, three punch outs for him. Then you had A.J. Minter and Joe Jimenez throw scoreless innings and Rysel Iglesias, a couple of strikeouts and converting his 13th save and a scoreless ninth inning for him. It was everything you wanted to see, and those, I think, are the relievers that we're going to start seeing in the back end. I know Nick Anderson's going to factor into that, but we wanted to see A.J. Minter get things on track. He has. You wanted to see Kirby Yates start to get things on track. Well, I'm here to tell you he's done that, as has Joe Jimenez, and all of that to set up Iglesias. This bullpen is starting to really come together, and it's had a good month of June overall, I say. Yeah, and I did touch on this. I did an episode earlier in the week, Who Can You Trust in That Bullpen? And I mentioned Mentor and Iglesias are the two guys that I trust the most right now. And I mentioned Kirby Yates is certainly getting into that discussion. And I thought it was very telling in this game that he went to, to Yates, as you said, to get out of that fifth inning and then gave him another inning as well. And he's been really good here lately. And then he went to Joe Jimenez in the eighth inning, not Nick Anderson, who has plenty of rest as well. So again, I, these are two guys at the beginning of the year. If you would have told me they become they, that they're the t- key setup guys in this bullpen, I would have said absolutely. But with the way the season started, uh, you know, it's funny how it's played out this way that now you're starting to see these guys maybe live up to the potential that you thought could possibly be with Yates and, and him and as him and as being the big trade acquisition in the off season to be that big setup guy. And he's been better as of late. So I think you're right. I think these four guys here, I think are the ones you're going to start seeing a lot more than the ball games in close situations. Yeah. And let me throw some numbers out there on Kirby Yates last nine appearances, 11 innings, just seven hits allowed a couple of earned runs. They both come on solo homers, zero walks those last 11 innings, 18 strikeouts that as they say will certainly play he's missing bats and the walks are not a problem for him and that was a big thing and I've talked to Kirby a bunch of times this year when he had his huge 2019 season he walked 19 guys that whole year so the control problems command issues he was having early on he told me that's really the last thing that the folks have told him about Tommy John surgery and he's been through it twice is you're just trying to get the command back you may have the feel for it you may have the velocity back but the overall command and execution is locked in there right now He's got a 172 ERA since May the 22nd. Then you got Joe Jimenez, last 10 outings, 10 innings, five hits, four walks, one earned run, 10 strikeouts for him. These are the kind of numbers you needed to see from those two guys out of the bullpen. We'll talk about the Braves offense, and it was pretty much a, uh, you know, you got as much as you needed, and it came from a familiar face, a name that we've been calling quite a while as of late. But before that, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors. It's Game Time. Because this episode of the Braves Postcast is brought to you by Game Time, which is the place for last minute ticket deals. So you can forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event with exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater. You get the drift. Whatever you're looking for, pretty good chance Game Time's got it. So check them out. The Game Time guarantee also means that you'll have the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of that difference. 
that is a pretty nice little guarantee there. Snag those tickets without the stress on game, with Game Time. Download that Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create that account and redeem the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Looking overall at what the Braves have done offensively on this day, it was Matt Olson who came up big for them. He had a run scoring double. Ozzy Albies provided a sack fly. Then it was late. The Matt Olson Power Show is not over for the month of June. Homer number 26. That leads the National League. Two behind Shohei Otani for the big league lead. And then you got the National League leading RBI men. And Olsen with 62 now. Ozzy with 56. Now, these are names that we're pretty familiar with in the Braves' red-hot month of June, Jake. And I love what Matt Olson, you know, obviously did in this game. But in particular, in the first inning, because you had Acuna on second base with nobody out. Ozzy strikes out. Riley I believe flew out in that first inning, and it looked like maybe you weren't going to get anything out of this. And then Olsen takes a couple of off-speed pitches, gets in a 2-0 count, and then sits on a Maeda fastball up in the zone and just drills it out to right center field to give the Braves another first-inning run, their 76th of the year. So I loved that at bat right there for Matt Olsen. Obviously, the home run is nice as well. Give you a little bit of cushion there in the eighth inning to make you feel a little bit better about it going into the ninth. But the guy just continues you know, to deliver – power the extra base hits a double a home run in this one i mean it's just i don't know what else you can say about matt olson at this point he's been exactly what you need him to be a power guy he's going to get you a ton of extra bases going to drive in a lot of runs yes he's going to strike out some but he's also going to walk as well have the high on base percentage so really love what we've seen from him lately particularly this month and then acuna getting on three times at the top of the order yeah. michael harris with two more hits i mean yeah. those guys getting on there and setting up those big boppers in the middle top of the middle order you know it's going to lead to a lot of runs so again it's just been great production from this Braves offense and after a night where Olsen didn't get a hit Tonight it was his, or today rather, was his turn, and he comes up and delivers. Yeah, and that's one thing he said is anybody in this lineup, they can come through and deliver. Anybody in this lineup can get on base, and that is why they are so good one through nine. You mentioned, and one through nine, number one is Ron Lacuna Jr., a single and two walks. He stole his 36th base. He just won away from tying his career high of 37, set back in 2019, scored his 71st run in the first inning as well. That's got him on pace, Jake, for 144 runs. That would shatter the Braves single season record set by Dale Murphy in 1983. That's just another thing that Ron Lacuna is on pace for, in addition to a nearly 75 stolen base season that he's got working. And you talked about the 76 first inning runs for the Braves, five more than they scored in 162 games last year in the first inning, and easily the most in baseball. It's a potent lineup. It starts with Ron Lacuna Jr., but a one through nine, you've got threats all up and down this lineup, and it can be a different guy every day. And we saw it again. Uh, but at the, at the nine spot to kind of put a pin in all of this for the Braves lineup, ho-hum for Michael Harris. Two more hits, a stolen base for him, another run scored. He's pushed his batting average close to 270. He's done it in about three weeks. Like you said about Matt Olson, I don't know what there's left to say. Maybe go back in the archives and listen to some of our other shows. But Michael Harris has made the month of June his own, and it's put his whole season back on track. It has. And you look at the hits he's getting now, and you're seeing him drive the ball the other way every now and then, but he's also pulling the ball through the right side with authority. You know, at least one of the hits he had today, I think both of them were to the pool side, but are just line drive shots, two more hard hit balls. And this one, he's finding that sweet spot. And that's what we talked about when he was struggling so badly. It's that he just wasn't finding that sweet spot. And a lot of them were either pop ups or weak ground outs, but now you're seeing him. You know, find whatever mechanical adjustment it was there, he's able to find the barrel far more often. So even those balls that are pulled to the right side, they're hit at a higher velocity now and getting through. And obviously when he gets on base, just like Acuna, he's a stolen base threat as well, which we saw today. Yeah, a lot of fun when those two guys are on base. And it usually means great things for the Braves offense. Let's talk about Friday. The Braves are off on Thursday. They welcome the Miami Marlins to town. First of a three-game set. To be determined is listed as the starting pitching matchup on both sides. We believe, though, Michael Soroka is in the discussion to get that start for Atlanta. We'll, of course, see everything get confirmed here over the next 48 hours. But uh, another shot for him will be something I know I want to see. He's pitched well in Gwinnett, Jake, and I think that he's kind of lined up to make a couple of starts here before the All-Star break, be well-rested in doing making those outings, and perhaps give the Braves a little bit more to think about as they go along in the season. And maybe he's shown them a little bit more of what they wanted to see in AAA to have him up here to stay when he comes back this time. Yeah, and that's the key there. They, and they said it originally when they bring him up, they want him to be here to stay. Hopefully he's ready for that. Hopefully he has been able to go down there and work on the things he needs to so that when he does come up, 
that he is here to stay and can be a big part of the rotation. So we'll see what happens. I know Mark Bowman over on Twitter did a great job trying to break down how the Braves might <laughs> schedule it out the rest of the way as we all try to figure out what the Braves are doing. Um, but it does seem like it's going to be Soroka the second time this week. We thought he might start, so we'll see if it actually happens this time. But I am looking forward to seeing him getting another opportunity. Obviously, we're all rooting for him and want to see him get back up to the big league level and stay there. Yep, no doubt about it. Want to see him be part of the winning that the Braves are doing as well. And they'd like to do some winning against the Marlins. They're 6-1 and one against them head-to-head. -head. This is a three-game series against a club that has played pretty good baseball against anybody other than the Atlanta Braves. But they've been about six games back for the month of June as they've moved into second place. So a battle of the two top teams in the National League East is, comes your way at 7.20 p.m. on Friday. That's the first pitch for the Braves and the Marlins at Truist Park. Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Braves postcast. Another great win for Atlanta. 3-0 that final score. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to Locked On Sports Atlanta and to Locked On Braves, wherever you get your podcasts. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. We look forward to catching you this weekend as the Braves battle the Marlins. And until then, so long, everyone.